Okay, let's dive in. Imagine, if you will, two absolutely colossal black holes. I mean, huge, way bigger than we thought possible, spiraling towards each other. With just unimaginable force. Exactly. And then, bang. But we didn't see it. We sort of, well, we heard it. Right. Not with sound waves, but through ripples in space-time itself, gravitational waves. Today, we're unpacking GW231123. It's a cosmic collision so extreme, it's uh, it's really shaking things up, making us question the rules. It really is. This detection came from the LIGO Virgo Tegra network, LVK for short. And this isn't just another merger, is it? We're looking at something that, based on our best science, shouldn't really exist. That's the core of it. Our sources for this, by the way, are reports hot off the press, space.com, caltech.edu, Ars Technica, all dated July 14, 2025. And what's so fascinating, beyond just the, you know the sheer size, are the implications. It's not just bigger, it's forbidden, according to standard models. Forbidden. That's a strong word in science. It is. And it poses a huge question. What happens when what we observe flat out contradicts our theories about how the universe is supposed to work? That's exactly what we want to get into. So this event, GW231123, it was heard back on November 23, 2023. How? Tell us about the ears. Right. So the ears are these incredible detectors. LIGO in the U.S. It actually has twin sites, one in Louisiana, one in Washington State. Uh -huh. Then there's Virgo in Italy and KJRR in Japan. They're all part of this LVK network. And they're basically giant L-shaped interferometers. Precisely. Highly sensitive laser interferometers. They shoot laser beams down long arms. And if a gravitational wave passes through, it stretches and squeezes space time just a tiny, tiny amount. Like unimaginably tiny. Exactly. And these detectors can pick up that minuscule change. It's an amazing feat of engineering. This signal came during their fourth observing run, 04. Okay, let's get to the numbers because they are frankly mind boggling. The black holes that merged. Yeah, the progenitors. One was about 100 times the mass of our sun. Okay, 100 solar masses. It's already huge. And the other, around 140 times the mass of the sun. Wow, just think about that. Our sun is 99.8% of everything in our solar system. These things are giants. Well, absolute behemoths. And when they merged... What did they form? They created a new single daughter black hole clocking in at 225 solar masses. 225, but wait, 100 plus 140 is 240. Where did the, uh, the other 15 solar masses go? That's the incredible part. That missing mass, about 15 times the mass of our sun, was converted directly into energy, pure energy. EMC squared on a cosmic scale. You got it. And that energy is what powered the gravitational waves that traveled across the universe for us to eventually detect here. So this dwarfs the previous record holder then? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. GW190521 detected back in 2021 that formed a black hole of about 140 solar masses. This new one, GW231123 at 225, it's in a different league entirely. It's the most massive gravitational wave detection ever. Which brings us back to that word forbidden. Why is something this massive considered forbidden by our standard models? What's breaking down? It comes down to how we think black holes typically form. The standard picture involves a massive star reaching the end of its life, collapsing under its own gravity, maybe going supernova and leaving behind a black hole. Right. Stellar evolution. Exactly. But there's a sort of mass gap, or rather a mass limit, predicted by those models. Certain nuclear processes inside very massive stars are expected to blow them apart so completely that they don't leave any black hole behind, or only smaller ones. Ah, so they destroy themselves too effectively. In a way, yes. It's called pair instability. Stars in a certain mass range are thought to just obliterate themselves. So forming a single black hole of, say, 100 or 140 solar masses directly from a star, our models say that shouldn't happen. Hence forbidden. I'm thinking of that quote from Mark Hannum at LVK in Cardiff University. Yes, he said it plainly. This is the most massive black hole binary we've observed through gravitational waves, and it presents a real challenge to our understanding of black hole formation. And then the kicker, black holes this massive are forbidden through standard stellar evolution models. So if they can't form directly from single stars collapsing, mm. how did these monsters come to be? What's the leading idea? The most plausible explanation right now is something called hierarchical merger. Hierarchical, like, levels. Yeah. Steps. Exactly. The idea is that these huge black holes weren't formed in one go. They're potentially the result of previous mergers. So smaller black holes merge to make a bigger one, 
Uh-huh. And then that merged black hole finds another one, maybe another merged product, and they merge again. Precisely. Building up mass generation by generation, like cosmic nesting dolls almost. These 100 and 140 solar mass objects might themselves be second generation or even third generation black holes. That paints a picture of a much more dynamic, violent universe, especially yeah. in dense environments like globular clusters or galactic centers where black holes are more likely to encounter each other. It certainly does. It suggests these mergers are a key process for growing the most massive black holes over cosmic time. Okay, so the mass is one massive headache for the models. Yeah. But there was something else unusual too, wasn't there? Something about spin. Yes, that's another really fascinating layer to this. At least one of the progenitor black holes before they merged was spinning incredibly fast. How fast are we talking? Potentially near the theoretical maximum speed allowed by Einstein's general relativity. Charlie Hoy from the University of Portsmouth described it as perhaps as rapidly as the laws of physics allow. Wow. So, like, the event horizon's practically whipping around. You can think of it like that, yeah. It severely warps the space-time around it. And finding such a rapid spin is also challenging for formation models. It's hard to get a black hole spinning that fast through just a standard stellar collapse or even simple merger scenarios. Does that extreme spin affect the gravitational wave signal itself? Oh, absolutely. Hoy pointed out that this rapid spin makes the signal difficult to model and interpret. The waves emitted by a spinning, merging system are much more complex than from non-spinning ones. So it's pushing the analysis tools as well. Definitely. As Ed Porter from CNRS in Paris put it, this system is a dual challenge. It tests our data analysis techniques and our theoretical models. He expects scientists will be digging into this data for years. It really highlights how far we've come, though. I mean, Einstein predicts these waves in 1915. Just on paper, based on his theory. Right. Purely theoretical first entry. And then, boom, 2015. LIGO makes that first detection, GW150914. That was, what, a 62 solar mass black hole formed? That's right. Groundbreaking. It opened a whole new window onto the universe, proved Einstein right yet again, and launched this whole field. And since then, the network has just grown. Virgo joining in 2016, Keigurai in Japan coming online. And Keigurai being underground is interesting, too. Helps shield it from noise. Right. So this LVK collaboration uh -huh. racked up quite a few detections now. Oh yeah. Over 300 black hole mergers detected in total since 2015, and the pace is picking up. That fourth observing run, 04, which ran from May 2023 to January 2024, snagged over 200 detections alone. Incredible. It's like we've suddenly developed a new sense to perceive the universe's most violent events. It really is. Dave Wright Sliga's director at Caltech said this latest observation once again demonstrates how gravitational waves are uniquely revealing the fundamental and exotic nature of black holes throughout the universe. We're seeing things we could only guess at before. So GW231123, with its forbidden mass and that crazy spin, hmm. It feels like a benchmark moment. It's pushing the tech, pushing the theory. What does this mean going forward? It means we're likely just scratching the surface. It shows that our current instruments and analysis methods are being tested right at their limits. Pushed to the edge. Exactly. Sophie Bunny, a Caltech researcher, really captured it. She said this event pushes our instrumentation and data analysis capabilities to the edge of what's currently possible but she also framed it positively. How so? She called it a powerful example of how much we can learn from gravitational wave astronomy and how much more there is to uncover. It's a signpost saying, look deeper, refine your tools, there are even stranger things out here. So we need better detectors, better models. Absolutely, and better analysis techniques. Gregorio Carullo at the University of Birmingham mentioned it could take years for the community to fully unravel this intricate signal pattern and all its implications. Years just for this one signal. Well, to really understand all the nuances, yes. He suggested that maybe more complex scenarios, perhaps involving the environment around the black holes or even deviations from standard gravity, could be the key to deciphering its unexpected features. So this one event could spark whole new lines of research. Without a doubt. It's forcing us to be more creative, to think beyond the standard frameworks. Wow. Okay, so wrapping this up, this deep dive into GW231123, it's been, well, massive. It really underscores how observing the universe constantly forces us to question what we think we know. It does. Even our best models are just approximations, always waiting to be refined or even overturned by the next big discovery. Exciting times for cosmology and astrophysics. Truly. And it leaves you wondering, doesn't it? This discovery is a stark reminder that the universe is 
uh, way more complex, more surprising, maybe even weirder than we often imagine. Yeah. Every single one of these detections pushes us, challenges us, and invites us to ask bigger, bolder questions about how everything works right back to the very beginning. Absolutely. So if this journey into the heart of a black hole collision got you thinking, imagine the other cosmic mysteries we can explore together. There's certainly no shortage of them. Definitely not. So make sure you subscribe to The Deep Dive. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next exploration. And hey, we genuinely want to know what you think. Did something about GW231123 blow your mind? Got a theory about hierarchical mergers or that crazy spin? Or maybe another cosmic puzzle you want us to tackle? Yeah, let us know down in the comments. We love reading your thoughts and see what stands out to you.